On the screen and pinned in a YouTube comment are 10 front-end projects I think will look impressive on any aspiring front-end junior developers portfolio. Originally, I'd planned to go through all 10 projects and talk about them in more depth, but then I realized I could just show you how I found the project ideas. You can take that technique to generate hundreds, if not thousands of project ideas. And most importantly, since you only need a couple, ideas that suit both the technologies that you know and your personal interests. I actually think one of the best ways to complete and build an impressive side project is to scratch your own itch, so to speak, and build something that you find genuinely interesting. Hey, I'm Alex from Scrimba, and before we go too far, I want to be clear that although these techniques could help you come up with ideas for any skill of project, I will be focusing a little bit more on the kind of intermediate projects that you might look to build if you are, for example, creating a portfolio, ramping up for your first developer job, and generally trying to become a standout developer. If you are a little bit newer to front-end development and looking for some specific beginner-friendly project ideas, here are eight on the screen right now. I've actually extracted these from one of the new courses at Scrimba called Learn React for Free, in which Bob Zarol, our head of education, teaches you React step-by-step -step in this epic 11-hour course. Everything is super interactive, which means you won't just be passively consuming, you'll be encouraged to click within the editor and write your own React code and build these eight projects along the way. From this moment on, you can consider the video to be in two discrete parts. In part number one, I'm going to show you a few different sources of project ideas, both novel and creative ideas, as well as very real world ideas that can show an employer that you can contribute to a real world problem. Then in part two, which will be much shorter, I want to talk a little bit about the mentality of choosing a project, since I think a lot of us have a tendency to overthink this, when really the best thing you can do is pick a project that's exciting to you and complete it. Let's talk more about that later. Just bear in mind that while I talk about both these points, I'm going to trickle in some commentary about what I think employers are looking for in front-end projects. The first place I'd suggest you go to find project ideas is this awesome, lesser-known website called devpost.com. It is orientated around organizing hackathons and sharing projects from hackathons. Ergo, it's a great source of project ideas. Not only that, but these projects tend to be quite novel and cutting edge, since one of the surest ways to do well in a hackathon is to build something around real world events. Also, because hackathons typically last a day or two, all the kind of ideas and projects on this website are fairly limited in scope, which I think will inspire you to build something that you can actually finish. One thing that an employer would love to see is a project that's important to you. I don't think they go looking for that specifically, but you can bet that if you care about the project, you will talk about it with passion, and that's something that can really help you appear confident and knowledgeable in a coding interview. I came across so many projects so quickly on this website. For example, Hacktube, a Chrome extension to filter heinous comments with a profanity API. NoQ, a website to pre-book TSA security slots. Jigmap, which is a website to create and share roadmaps, maybe a roadmap to becoming a front-end developer. By the way, this one had a Figma file in the YouTube description, which means that you could maybe even use this website as a source for design inspiration if that's not your forte. Also, every post on DevPost has a few sort of templatey questions. These almost make them feel like case studies, which say you're building a portfolio. I think it's great not only to link the project and the code, but some text about why you built it and what challenges you overcame. All this to say it's a great source of inspiration. I also came across Pyra, a team collaboration app, since we're all remote now. Legist, which alerts Americans about new US policies and condenses them from thousands of words to a few hundred characters. Super cool idea super important topic, a dashboard to track hospital workers' health, and Jarvis, a productivity app. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can either copy these ideas, combine them, build on top of them. I just think it's a great source, so keep that in mind. Let's look at the second source of project ideas. The second website I recommend you check out is upwork.com, which is a freelance platform where clients can post jobs they want fulfilling, either features, tasks, or full-blown projects, and then you as a freelancer, or would-be freelancer, can potentially request to work on the project for money. But this, this isn't what this video is about. I'm not suggesting you actually do the freelance work. What I'm saying is, every single idea on Upwork 
where every single post represents a real world problem. And if you can solve any of these problems, you can bet it would look good on your resume or portfolio because you're contributing to something that a client wants. What I would do is search for something like JavaScript, make sure you remove any filters. You don't really need to worry about eligibility or even if the jobs are recent since you're not here to propose that you work on the jobs, but just take the ideas basically. And while it's a bit harder to come by, you'll sometimes even come across specifications, Figma files, templates, and all that good stuff, which can take away a lot of the heavy lifting, allowing you to focus only on the code. Another great source of project ideas is producthunts.com, which you may or may not have heard of. Years ago, it was only really for new indie creators. So a lot of the submissions were quite rough new projects. Again, these are things that could be inspiring to you because you can build them in a relatively short period of time, increasing your chance of completing them. Nowadays, there are more companies and professional teams. So what I would actually do is, yeah, browse Product Hunt, it's a great website still, but what I would do is look for some of the most highly upvoted creators or creators that have submitted the most projects because that will give you some idea about, you know, if they're going very broad, they can't also be going very deep, meaning their projects are probably quite doable for someone like yourself. There's gonna be a bunch of novel ideas, things you might think, damn, I wish I thought of that myself. It's okay, build it anyway. The point here isn't to create some mind-blowing brand new business or app, but to flex and practice your programming skills. Here's another idea that can draw so many great ideas. Go to GitHub and click the Explore tab, and from there search various open source projects by programming language, topic, or whatever else have you. I do admit it's going to be largely dominated by very trendy, sort of high-end open source projects. That's just what this interface exposes. But, you know, why not use for example, the Hacktoberfest topic, where people are advertising projects that are accessible to contribute to, that might give you an impression about sort of what, what sort of level the project's at, right? You wouldn't find an open source kernel with the Hacktoberfest topic, for example, but you might find a really cool CRUD application that sparks the next idea for your project. Just quickly on the mindset of choosing a project, I hope by now after getting all these ideas and sources of inspiration that the project ideas aren't your problem anymore. Hopefully you have sources for tens if not hundreds of ideas, but as I alluded to in the intro, you only need one, two, maybe three to really stand out. What I think tends to happen is we, we overthink these things, looking for the perfect project that combines the perfect technologies or has the perfect potential for being trendy. But as I also alluded to, you know, if you pick something that already matches the technologies you're using and really scratches your own itch, either it's an issue you care about. For example, when we looked at dev posts, we looked at various health and political related apps, or it could just be something that geek, you wanna geek out about that's super fun. I really think the most important thing is when you pick a project to commit time every day in your calendar. I love to time block it, put one or two hours in consecutive or split up, whatever suits you, and commit to working on that project every day for just a little bit. When you do this, you'll be gobsmacked at how much progress you can make. But the most important thing is having that structure and showing up every day. Anyway, I hope you have more ideas than you know what to do with. And, and yes, hopefully some idea about what to do with them, which is to build them and block out time. If these ideas seem a little bit out of reach or it's a little bit overwhelming, please come to Scrimba and check out some of the courses we're creating. I really specifically want to draw attention to the Learn React course, which just came out. Um, and I've invited Bob to tell you a little bit more. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, so when I was designing my new Learn React course, which by the way is free for everyone to take, I specifically focus the curriculum around project-based learning. We start with a really simple static site just to get our feet wet with React, but then we eventually build up to a full-fledged trivia app that pulls questions from an API, scores your answers, and so forth. Something new we're introducing into all Scrimba courses is something called a solo project. The concept is that we give you a project to build on your own without any help from the instructor, which you can use to gauge your own abilities. Because how many times have you completed a coding course or tutorial and realized you weren't actually able to build anything without someone holding your hand? The best part about this is you don't need to bang your head against a wall trying to figure out what projects to build that both fits well within the scope of what you've been learning and is also still doable. And then once you complete that project, you'll have a ton more confidence to do exactly what Alex has been saying, to find something you're passionate about, set some boundaries to a project, 
and get started on it right away. So if you're interested at all in learning the beginnings of React, please go check out my Learn React for free course on Scrimba and make sure you take full advantage of the code while you learn technology that drives the whole Scrimba platform. Amazing stuff. I've been Alex Boker. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel as well as the Scrimba podcast. That's my podcast where I interview successful Scrimba students and inspiring developers so you can learn how they found success. I've also put a couple of videos on the screen that I think you might enjoy. Until next time.